So, where was I? Uh, hopefully, you can see there a link to the um, to the notes that I put up. It's a PDF uh, on the topic of sacrifice, and it should be there. <laughs> okay, my computer's delayed, so any hoodle. Okay, so uh, we're on. Hopefully, you can access the notes. Uh, if not, you can access them afterwards, and that should be fine too. I'm actually going to start with uh, the second page of the notes, if you've got them. Uh, because there are three pictures, if you will, of sacrifice that I want to present before you. And I'm going to finish with uh, some stuff by uh, René Girard. So we'll do page two first, then we'll go page one. Eh, you'll follow along. And I want to start by saying, um, in my mind, the picture of sacrifice has almost always been about... Uh, Essentially, um, trying to uh, pay God to do things. Does that make... Uh, hopefully that makes some sense. You know, um, in the ancient times, we would sacrifice to something to the gods and everyone would behave themselves or the weather would behave itself or something like that. So that's the picture that I grew up with around the word sacrifice. Um but it's hardly ever the picture that's actually used in the Bible. So uh, you think I would have grown up with something slightly different, but that's kind of the cultural picture, isn't it? You know, when we, say, when we use the word sacrifice, religious context, it's this um, sacrifice to the gods for rain, for one of a better ex example. Um, one of the things we can do, though, is we can use the word sacrifice to define what are the things we believe in. Um, what are what are our gods? So uh, you know, if you think about it, um, if someone believes in something, uh, they're going to give to a lot to that, and they're not going to ask too many questions about it. So um, think of uh, think of perhaps a soldier on the battlefield and they uh, they believe earnestly in the country that they are fighting for. Um, and they are willing to sacrifice their own life. Their picture their, of the ideal of their country is such that they are willing to sacrifice their own life. Um, or if you look at the picture on on the screen there, I've got a I've got a picture of a guy and he's kind of buff and he's clearly spent some time in the gym, and his belief in the value of a body like that has driven him to sacrifice time and energy and and money if he's been going to the gym. He may even have sacrificed his physical health to appear healthy. So, we, we have this very different picture of the word sacrifice. Sacrifice is how we define what we believe or who our gods are in a practical sense. So, it, it's, it's like that, you know, don't tell me what you believe. Let me observe you and I will tell you what you believe. Um, and, you know, in the gym example, you know, I can tell that you believe that this is going to somehow make you happy or significant or add significance to your life. That kind of thing. Um, so sacrifice, they're very non-religious sometimes. I mean, it, it could be religious. It could be. But it's not a necessarily religious concept. So there we go. So the first thing there, sacrifice is defines what we believe what are our 
gods. Lowercase g, probably, probably. Um, and it's worth kind of having a think about. Now, if anyone has any questions, I can see questions as they come up. Uh, no guarantee I'll have an answer, of course. But if you think of something, just post it and I'll try and respond straight away. Uh, the next picture of sacrifice that's on that same page, and this is not going to take us too long, I assure you, um, and I've titled it there, The De-Economizing of the Valued Item. Uh, and the picture there is Cain and Abel. And if you remember the story of Cain and Abel uh, in the Bible, um, there's this kind of, they both bring sacrifices to God, um, but they bring what's valuable to them. And so sacrifice in this picture undermines or negates uh, the, the, the economizing picture of. So if you think about the picture I first mentioned, how we sacrifice uh, to the gods to ensure rain, uh, it's an economic transition transaction, isn't it? Uh, you know, God, I'll give you um, these three sheep if you make sure the rest are kept safe. It's economic. But if we think of sacrifice rather as de-economizing something that we value, so it's not God, uh, I will, you know, sacrifice three sheep so you keep the others safe. It's, God, this thing is truly valuable to me. And as a, you know, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it from the economic system. It's no longer going to be valuable to me because I'm going to burn my grain. And the smoke's going to go up to heaven. And it's out of the economic system. Not because I didn't care. Not because it didn't have value but because it did. Uh, and so th this is definitely moving into kind of that religious picture. But it's a religious picture that uh, very much undermines the, the traditional picture of sacrifice, which is engaging in an economics. It's about disengaging from an economics. I was also thinking of, you know, like the gym motivational thing. So I've got another kind of motivational poster there on the notes, uh, if you can get them. You know, the hope. Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And, and I'm sure you've heard that, haven't you? You know, um, you, know, you, do, you know, if you love painting, if you love making beanies, uh, if you love that and you do it, you know, we're not working. Um, but the sacrifice there is that after a while, painting or making beanies is just a job. And so you've economized, you've put into the economy um, a thing that you used to value, and now you don't. Um, so it's kind of a very mm, undermining-y kind of phrase, but at the same time, worth having a little bit of a, a think about when we talk about uh, how we run our our, our lives, um, and I, I I mean, so these notes are fairly old, but I was I was thinking about um, you know people with this COVID virus, and they were saying things like, uh, you know, if you don't know what your side hustle is, it took me a while. So a side hustle is like you've got your real job, and then something you do on the side to earn a bit of extra cash. Um, and so the idea is usually it's a hobby um, that will help you earn some extra money. Um, and the, just the warning in this is that, hey, sometimes uh, the best hobbies are the ones that don't earn us anything because otherwise we're sacrificing the joy in that. So I know that was kind of complicated and convoluted, but the basic premise there is one picture of sacrifice is we take something that has economic value and we remove it from the economic structure as opposed to the traditional that had an economic value and we've engaged in, in an economy with the gods. 
So um, that's just two little pictures there on the notes, just to point to them, just to kind of give you some awareness. Uh, just remember, so um, if you don't have the notes, they should be the previous posts, so just kind of scroll down a tiny bit. Um, and then I think if you open it up in a separate tab, if it's on your computer, you can still access it. So there's two pictures of sacrifice that were not the traditional picture. Um, and I want to move on to the main uh, picture, if you will. Uh, and that's the, the stuff by René Girard. I can remember coming across René Girard a number of years ago at a clergy summer school. And when I say I came across him, not him personally, but the work of René Girard. And it was very much, it helped inform my thinking on a lot of the topics around sacrifice, around uh, how we do scapegoating, all of those sorts of things. And it's very much his area. And if you want to go further into it, I, I, I thoroughly encourage that you explore his philosophy, even if you just read about it on Wikipedia or something like that. Um, but he's got some, some books out there as well. So the first part of the uh, sacrifice for René Girard is the recognition of mimetic learning and mimetic desire. Um, and it's... You know, we've got a little kid at home now. He's one and a bit. Um, and uh, it's amazing how much uh, they learn by watching. So at the moment, starting to learn language um, and copying sounds that they're hearing uh, and wanting to play with the things other people are playing with. So if you want to distract him from, say... Uh, your phone, make sure you play with some blocks, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and it's a very powerful thing. And you can see it in infants, but it's not just infants. Uh, you see it in the way people are, you know, react to labeling and brand labels, and advertising often works with this. So the idea is uh, we mimic other people including their desires. So if I, thinking about advertising, if I see some person on an ad and they really want that can of Coke, I will also want that can of Coke. Uh, and so we mimic people to learn, but we also mimic people in their desires. Uh, and that's particularly the case if they're quite close to us uh, in the power structure. And so what we start to get is we get this kind of uh, mimicking of desire. Uh, now, if, if, if it's just an ad, that's fine because the model can't see us. But imagine it's someone else, uh, say, at school with us. I see, you know, uh, Bob really wants that handball. Sonny, I want the handball a bit. Now, Bob's... I'm keeping an eye on Bob, and Bob's keeping an eye on Andrew, and suddenly Bob goes, oh, Andrew wants that handball. That must be a really good handball. You know, I kind of wanted it. Now I really want it. Uh, and so we start to both kind of really, 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 really want the handball. Um, until eventually, uh, the handball becomes irrelevant, and what we get is we just get uh, a mutual desire. So, what that does is it creates a certain amount of conflict, doesn't it? I mean, that makes sense. Now, if you're on the notes, uh, we're kind of coming into this on the bottom of the... I nearly pointed at the notes on my, on my computer screen, which you can't see. Um, <laughs> so we're coming in at the bottom of the kind of... The, I've got a, a, a square structure. We're coming in at the bottom of that where we have the triangle that describes the construction of desire. Okay. What that then does is it leads to conflict. 
uh, until eventually um, we get this create this uh, community that is in crisis. And what the community does is it turns around and it suddenly blames one person. Um, maybe it blames me. You know, I was the one that wanted Bob's handball. Or maybe it blames Bob Ball. Or maybe it actually blames uh, Sue, who was watching this and didn't... Because you know. often it's not logical, it's emotional. Uh, and so we get um, what's called unanimity minus one. So we're all in agreement, it was Bob's fault. It was Bob's fault. Clearly it was Bob's fault. And so we kick Bob out of the group. Um, but what happens at a school is kind of Bob ends up coming back into the group because, you know, the bell rings in the classroom and we all go back into the classroom. And for a while we're not talking to Bob. But, you know, we get over it. In ancient times, uh, what would have happened um, is that instead of kicking Bob out of the group until the bell rang, uh, we'd all gathered round and somebody would have gotten out the knives and Bob would have been murdered. And what we'd have is we'd have this unanimity minus one, but we've now subtracted the one that was the minus one. So we have unanimity with a slightly smaller tribe. Um, and then we can con kind of continue with our lives. But we start to think, you know what, we, things are doing really well now that Bob is dead. And we start to think very highly of Bob to such an extent that we think perhaps um, the Bob's death was, brought peace. So Bob's death brought peace in the system. And so Bob's death becomes the necessary sacrifice, the sacrifice we had to have uh, for peace. Um, and so... After a while, when we start to get a bit fractious in the community, um, the way religion operates is it actually reminds us of the peace we got from sacrificing Bob. Uh, when that doesn't work, we end up basically going around the cycle again until we have a structure of sacrifice in order to create peace. So there's three different pictures of sacrifice. Now, I do want to say, uh, with the René Girard material, part of why it's very interesting is that he recognizes in the Christian story, the Christ narrative, um, that the structure breaks down. Because in order for the structure to continue, we have to believe that somehow the sacrifice of Bob was a justified act. And so Bob has to be guilty of something. We have to be able to put our own anger and frustration onto Bob, and it has to stick. The only way it sticks is if in some way Bob is guilty of something. So this is where the term scapegoating comes from. So uh, in sort of in ancient times, in, in ancient Israel, uh, part of what would happen is at a particular festival in the year, all the sins of the people would be placed onto the scapegoat, the goat that was going to escape, and they would stick and the goat would be driven out into the wilderness and there it would die and with it it would take the people's sins. The problem with Jesus is that we there's a te temptation to put our sins onto Jesus in this kind of cathartic experience, but they don't stick. And so we have to start to ask ourselves a question about the, the ethic of sacrificing for someone else, for our own community's peace. Uh, and so uh, René Girard will, will, will indicate that um, this scapegoating mechanism is starting to break down in portions of society, partially because we have the particularly Christian uh, offering of the innocent victim, uh, not a concept in other traditions. 
Uh, there's no innocent victim or innocent bystander even. Uh, not in the same way, not in the same kind of structural uh, thinking -y kind of way. So, so there's three pictures of sacrifice that are not the normal picture. And I thought I would do this uh, today because this is the last of the Tuesday night studies uh, before Easter. And we often talk about the sacrifice uh, that Christ makes. And we need to have a think about how we're going to do that and what we're going to think about that um, and how we're going to try and process that picture. There are three pictures of the way the word sacrifice is used. Four if you count my, uh, this is how it's often used but it shouldn't be used, um, introduction. So, I know that's kind of a bit to have a think about. Um, and I, I hope you gain some, some thoughts, some ideas, uh, something to mull over. And if you've got any questions, post them up. Uh, I'm going to see, if, I'm going to see if I can scan back through the comments just to see if there are any questions in those. Um, but I think mostly they were comments about the fact that I started the video on my side. So uh, if you've got any questions, um, Now's the time, otherwise I'm going to finish off and say I hope you enjoyed. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed. See you.